So the House passes the anti-Semitism resolution earlier last week. One thing I want to talk to you about is the division with uh, Ilhan Omar and the Democratic Party. This should have been, what, what can I say, um, bipartisan all the way through. But Ilhan Omar opened her mouth, said some pretty nasty stuff, and all of a sudden Democrats don't know what to do. What is going on with the Democratic Party? And why did it take them this long to pass this resolution? And they added some pretty inclusive language. Well, yeah, in other words, you're, it's a perfect question, Jermaine. It really is important that we talk about this. The resolution was supposed to be, your language in a, was inappropriate, Congresswoman Omar. It is not to be repeated, and the House censures you. In other words, it's an embarrassment in public. Uh, the same thing that the Republicans did to Stephen King when he made some allusions to white oh, being yeah. better or white pride. He didn't even say anything even close to what Omar said. The Republicans kicked him off all the committees he was on, stripped him of all of his authority, and censured him in front of the United States Congress. They humiliated their own guy. What Omar said was way worse. But when they started drafting the resolution, here's what happened. The left wing said, we won't support it unless you make it anti-hatred of everybody resolution. By the time they got <laughs> done writing this thing, it wasn't just you shouldn't say anything anti-Semitic. It was you shouldn't say anything anti-Semitic, anti-Muslim, anti-gay, anti-LBGT, anti-this, anti-that. And they included as many groups as possible. So it became well, what's the right word? It's like the resolution in favor of air <laughs> or a unanimous resolution supporting the sun. It means nothing because it includes everybody. And it wouldn't quote what Omar said specifically, and it wouldn't mention her by name. So how did she react? In celebration saying, look what I got done. Poor me. I've had to put up with so much anti-Muslim rhetoric. I got the first anti-Muslim mm -hmm. resolution passed. So the aggressor, the perpetrator, parades herself around as the victim. When in reality, Jermaine, what she did was horrible and should have gotten her censured by the Congress and should have gotten her removed from the very important Foreign Affairs Committee in the Congress that literally controls the relationship with Israel. It's an incredibly important job. Pelosi could have removed her in a heartbeat. It's the Speaker who does it. And there would have been virtually no protest. But Pelosi's afraid of her because the left wing of the Democrat Party is not really Democrat anymore. It's progressive socialist of Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris and Christian Gillibrand and so forth that want to make it a different America, at least conceptually, than what we're used to. Remember, open borders, Beto O'Rourke wants to take down the fence that's already there, let everybody in. It's one big happy kumbaya family and everyone should be able to come here because as they know, when they come here, they're all going to vote blue. And that's really the reason behind it. So now, the resolution went through. It went through meaning nothing. And whether you voted for it or against it is really nonsensical. Because it has no teeth. There was no correction. There was no embarrassment. And germane, nobody got fired off their committee. Meaning... She's still on the Foreign Affairs Committee today. It, it, this is absolutely outrageous. And it's basically like they just watered down the bill to mean nothing. Just exactly what you said, right? We're going to throw all this stuff in. Um, something that was supposed to be 
exclusively for the Jewish community to have uh, protection for them against people like Ilhan Omar, crazy folks, right? She is celebrating that she screwed it up, right? I screwed it up. Yeah, because she understands that when she start adding all this, it's not really exclusively uh, protecting Jews anymore. And the Republicans are now coming out and they're, they are mocking this inclusive approach. They're saying that we left out the Jesus of Latter-day Saints, the Wiccans, the Jehovah Witness, disabled people, you know, um, all the top Republicans, the Judiciary Committee. I mean, are, are the uh, Republicans right with their assertions of this? Oh, yeah, it's pretty funny. They were making fun, literally, of the resolution that passed because as inclusive as it was, there were certain people like Wiccans, which are basically <laughs> witches. witches. Yeah, exactly. They got left out, you know, and there's a few Jehovah Witnesses that should have been in there, and the Mormons should have been in there. You know, when you include everybody, y your significance becomes um, de minimis, if not worthless, and mm -hmm. that's what happened here. Something that could have been very important the moment in time the Democrat Party didn't step up, they ran away. And their leader lied to the American public when she said um, Ilhan Omar shouldn't be blamed. Uh, she doesn't know what she's saying. I, I really do want to get in what James Clyburn said, though. He's the, um, he's the House Majority Whip, very, very powerful guy. Yep, and I was just about to get to it. Yo, go ahead. Something I'll so put it up right now. outrageous, Jermaine. Uh, I hope your, your viewers will watch it. What he said was, because Ilhan Omar came from Somalia, where it's violent, what she went through, hold on to your hat, was worse than the Holocaust. <laughs> and I, I barely have words. I mean, I have an intimate understanding because of my mother and my father and my uncle and my uncle and my aunt and my cousins and my grandparents were all in the Holocaust and some lived and some were killed there in the concentration camps in Auschwitz and I can tell you that the amount of ignorance necessary to say an immigrant from Somalia went through something worse than that is, is ludicrous and is blasphemy and it ought to be front page headlines that someone who's in such an important job Jermaine he's the house minority whip it's a big job could be that intentionally hurtful if not blindly ignorant you know he says Clyburn said this I've talked to Ilhan Omar and I can tell you she's living through a lot of pain so He's saying that he is not going to condemn her for what she said any more than the Tehran Times is applauding her or Louis Farrakhan is applauding her or David Duke is applauding her. All the people that are known for spewing horrible hatred and Congressman Clyburn climbs right on top of that wagon and says, yeah, me too. She's had it horrible. Let's make her the victim. Let's feel sorry for her because, as Nancy Pelosi said, she doesn't know what she's saying. It doesn't surprise me at all, Barry. If you look at what was going on earlier during um, the hearings two weeks ago, Rashida Tlaib started acting crazy, and who came to her, her defense? Elijah Cummings, right? Oh, she didn't really mean it like that. No, she didn't call you racist, Mr. Meadow. And blah, blah, blah. It's the same sort of jazz. So what we're seeing to me is that we're seeing Democrats who lack morality. I believe most Democrats lack morality, but that's a, a whole different story. But these folks here, they definitely lack morality. And what they do better than what I see Republicans doing is that they back each other up, right? Republicans, when somebody's doing the wrong thing, I don't know if I can come out and help him, right? Democrats, 
They, they can kill somebody. The, the next Democrat will step in. Hey, that person deserved to die. Don't worry. <laughs> blah, blah. You know, it, it's crazy. Don't you think that it's that type of um, mentality that the liberals have? Hey, we, we have to stick together no matter what, even if they're doing the wrong thing and, it, and, and their lack of morality. Well, they make very good party sheep if they follow the party blindly mm -hmm. uh, without any moral compass. When you can have this amount of horrible dialogue be swept under the rug, covered up and made okay by all the leaders of the party, Jermaine, and the outside haters pile on and go high five, yeah, that's great, we think that too. The future of the party is is literally a choice between good and evil, and and it's You're absolutely ironic. correct. It, it's ironic we're having this discussion now because we're going into primary season, and there's uh, yeah, somewhere around two dozen possible Democratic presidential candidates that are all going to try and convince the American people that they've got the best ideas. Well, if the ideas are the ideas of Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, as you said, and Ocasio-Cortez, you know, the, the three sisters of, of the new progressive wing, I am concerned that moderate Democrats who literally have jobs and don't want to share the wealth with everybody and aren't good <laughs> communists like Maduro in Venezuela mm -hmm. are going to have nobody to vote for. And if that's the case, it's going to be a very, very interesting election in November 2020, Jermaine. Yep. Very you know, interesting. 